in this nitty gritty basics let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at i love maj the topic for today is the t-zone i call this the on-ramp i also like to call it an overwhelm minimizer so if you're new to the game and you feel a little overwhelmed with playing the game for now this could be a solution for you it is a temporary solution though and we'll talk more about the process and the advice at the end. Welcome to the live stream. I want to give a quick shout out to our channel members. Thank you so much for being a channel member and for supporting Mosh Life. I also want to say thank you to moderators who will be helping monitor chat. Let me just make sure everything is going. I see we have viewers. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Okay. Let's see here. Hi, Marilyn. Hello, DC. Does anyone ever call you DC? I don't know why I said DC. D creates. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Let's get started. I'm going to share. Oops. I just took my screen out. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to do a quick presentation and then we're going to jump on to I Love Maj. I Love Maj has some really great features really for any level, but especially for beginners. All right. Let's see. Hi, Jane. Welcome. All right, we're going to get started now. American Mahjong on ramp, the T-Zone. When you look at the American Mahjong card, regardless of the year, you're going to have three panels and categories, lots of categories on the card, nine or ten consistently. And when you first learn this game, it could be a little overwhelming thinking about playing hands all over this card. Well, the T-Zone is one way to help minimize overwhelm as you're learning the game. This is the T-Zone. This is where you play across the middle of the card, and then you have a leg of the T. So the top of the T is two, four, six, eight evens. Then you have a consecutive run, and then three, six, nine. That's the top of the T. And then the leg of the T is odds. This is the T zone. And I'm not the one who came up with this idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. I've heard other instructors use this concept for uh, an entry point or an on ramp. So if you're new to the game, consider this. And here's why this is a good idea for beginners and this, this on ramp concept with the T zone. If you look at the different categories, besides wins and dragons, which are pretty specific tiles, wins and dragons, sometimes number tiles, and then flowers, of course. But if you look at the other categories, wins and dragons is kind of um, an exception to the rule. But most of the hands are in odds, consecutive run, three, six, nine, and evens. That would be the T excluding consecutive run or i'm sorry wins and dragons of course so let's see i don't recall if i have we're going to step through it so with evens there are seven hands that would be the first panel on the left seven hands to choose from then consecutive run has 11 three six nine eight i probably should have stepped it i'll have to fix that and then we have 14 in odds. So odds has the most hands. However, consecutive run is very flexible. So I would put those on equal ground as far as options. Because with consecutive run, you have nine numbers in a range. So you can go up or down that range because if you look at the consecutive run category, the most number of tiles you can use is five. 
most of the hands have two, three, or four numbers in a range. So with that in mind, you have a lot of flexibility using that full range, five tiles. There are also five tiles with odds, one, three, five, seven, nine, but there's a gap in between each one. So they're more specific, whereas consecutive run is more fluid. So consider that. And we're going to talk more about it as well. We're going to talk first about attributes because between the categories and these attributes together, there's really good information about how to pick a hand or how to pick an area to work within and then eventually pick a hand. So with the attributes, let's see here, we have wins again down in to the far right, 13 hands, not very many. We have dragons, wins and dragons together make up 23, 33 hands, I guess, together. There are more dragons than there are wins. These are some of the considerations that you want to keep in mind during the Charleston because you do not want to help your opponents. So consider when passing wins and dragons to maybe pass one of each. If and maybe like for example, a wind with a big number in one suit and a little number in a second suit. That would be a great pass. It's okay to pass a wind and a dragon together, but I would not pass two winds together and I would not pass two dragons together. Now there are exceptions to every guideline. So just these are kind of best to worst case scenarios as far as mitigating risk when you're passing in the Charleston. Flowers are in 30% Oh, this is actually pairs of flowers, pairs of flowers, 30% of the hands on the card or 21 hands with cons of flowers. That's 40%, 10 hands, cons of flowers. That's 44% total, 44%, oh, 14%. I think I said 10. It's 44% of the hands on the card use flowers. So try not to pass flowers. Maybe make it a rarity. Then there's like numbers. And when you think about like numbers, you might automatically look at that category on the left panel of the card. There are only two hands in any like numbers. But that is not actually where the like numbers are just in and of itself with that category. They're all over the card. There are 28 hands that use like numbers, 40%. This is why I personally do not pass like numbers or I try not to. I make it a rarity. And sometimes I will if my the development of my hand is uh, strong. If I have a very strong hand, I might risk passing like numbers. I think it's almost as risky as passing a pair. So I highly recommend not passing like numbers. Then, uh, let's see. Oh, we already talked about that. Okay, now let's talk about suits really quick. Because when you're looking at your dealt hand and you're thinking about, okay, wh which category am I going to focus on? Today we're talking about the T-zone, evens, consecutive run, three, six, nine, and odds. So when you look at your tiles and you think, which category will use most of my tiles? That would maximize the usage of your tiles. And we're going to talk a little more about identifying the strength of a hand in a bit. But before we do that, I want to mention that mixed suits are much more prevalent on the card than one suit. So we have 69% with mixed suits versus 27% with one suit. So while you are gathering tiles, keep every tile, regardless of suit, that can be used in your category. And that will maximize your options. And then when you run out of discards, decide, do I want to play one suit or mixed suits? And then free up discards and keep going. So try not to be distracted by one suit. Keep all the suits regardless. Or keep the tiles that can be used in the category regardless of suit. That's a better way to put it. All right. And finally, big multiples. 84%. 
of the hands on the card use big multiples. And big multiples are pungs and kongs primarily, but there are also quints, three, three hands that use quints. So with pungs, kongs, and quints, that's 84% of the hands on the card. And then with pairs, 61% use pairs. And then of course, singles are way down here on the right. It's only 16 hand, hands have singles in them. So American Mahjong is a game of multiples. 91% of the hands on the card, or really 91% of the components of any given hand are gonna be in multiples is probably the best way to explain that. So when you look at your dealt hand, if you target multiples, you're gonna set yourself up for success because eventually you're gonna need them anyway. So get your dealt hand and look for multiples and let that be your starting point. That should be the driver of the hand, the multiples. So you look at the multiples, and then you look at the rest of your tiles and you play a category that will use most of your tiles supporting the multiple. Let's see if I have uh, some visuals on this. Um, I probably do as we go. So let's go through hand development really quick because that is a, a significant part of, of playing Mahjong. It's all about developing your hand and being the first person to complete a hand on the card. So with hand development, there are, let's call them stages. The first stage is target. Target multiples, choose a category that uses most of the remaining tiles to support it. That would be targeting the multiples. Then you're going to gather tiles that can be used in the category regardless of suit because most of the hands, 69%, I think it was, use mixed suits. So keep all of them, regardless of the suit. Then build around the multiples to optimize quick hand development. Eventually you're gonna need them anyway, why not start there? And as you go, you're gonna defend. You're gonna do your very best to play pass defensively during the Charleston and discard safely during the pick and discard phase of the game. Target, gather, build, defend. These are the stages of hand development. Now, sometimes you have to reassess. That might happen if you get a funky pass. Like the other day, I got three sevens. So I reassessed my hand to see if I could use those. Uh, once I also got a pair of wins with a wind. So consider the need to reassess completely. Put your tiles in order so that you can get the lay of the land. Identify the strength of the hand. Typically, that's going to be with multiples. If you don't have multiples, you're going to look for the predominant pattern, which is going to be one of the categories on the card. Then you're going to gather tiles until you run out of discards, and eventually you're going to be able to pick a hand and then build your multiples. And along the way, you're going to defend. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. In a nutshell, that's what it is. It's a game of multiples. There's a little more involved, especially when you talk about strategy, because there's also reading hands, reading your opponents, but those are advanced strategies. And we're not going to talk about those so much during the nitty gritty basics. We're going to keep it super simple and at the fundamental level so that you can strengthen those fundamental skills and then you add on the more advanced on top of that and in the end you're going to be a really strong player. So American Mahjong is a game of multiples. Target multiples to optimize hand development. If you don't have multiples, target the predominant pattern, but when a multiple forms, reassess and target the strength of the hand. And hopefully that will be multiples because it will have formed, you start there and just basically start with a blank slate targeting the multiple. Gather and build around the strength of the hand, whether it be the, with the multiple or whether it be the predominant pattern, choose a category that uses the strength of the hand with most of your tiles. That's called maximizing. 
if you are between categories or hands and one of the or choose the one with no gaps we want to talk about gaps sometimes when i say this is a gap hand people don't quite understand what that means and an example of a gap hand would be if you're looking at maybe playing three six nine because you have threes and nines the gap would be no six so i wouldn't play three six nine instead i would play odds and use the three nine and look for fives and sevens then if a, a six comes in then maybe consider switching to three six nine depending on what you have so always consider whether or not you have gaps or even weaknesses and choose the category or hand that either has no gaps or no weaknesses or few weaknesses. A weakness might be where you need two pair and you have two singles. Those That would be a weakness. Another weakness could be where you need two comms and you have singles for each of those. Those are big multiples. And if you only have one of each, that's a weakness. So consider those things. If the choice is equitable with an option of consecutive run, play in consecutive run because of the flexibility innate to that category. Again, you have nine numbers in three suits and you have up to five numbers in a sequence in that category. So it's very flexible. Does anybody have any questions about all this? I know it's a lot. We're going to do some demonstration next. So we're going to go and play. First, I want to just give a quick shout out about my website. It's built out now and has been pretty stable for a while. So I invite you to come and take a peek. All right. So we're going to go now to I Love Mosh. Does anybody have any questions about the T-Zone? We're going to play in the T-Zone today. Maybe what we'll do, let's see here. The I'll save the advice for the end because the thing is you don't want to stay in the T-Zone for the duration of your career. <laughs> you want to venture out. And there's a, pro a process for that. And we'll talk about that at the end. So let me, let me share my screen. Oops. Okay, so here's I Love Mosh. You can see we're at the game launch pad. You can play with robots, which we'll do maybe later. You can play with your friends. You could play online with just anybody. You could even have a, a personal table. So those are great options. We're going to spend time in the exercise room where we're going to do Charleston practice. But if you are brand new to the game, consider doing this make a hand. They also have a suggestion box. So if you're stuck, you can click the suggestion box. So that's a really great exercise if you're brand new to the game. I see Marilyn says she struggles with 369 and, they, and has to substitute wins. Okay, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to play 369 and we can talk more about that. I think it's a very challenging category, so I'm not surprised that you struggle with it. A lot of people do. It's a very challenging category. And it's because there's such a big span between the numbers. It's just not very flexible. It's almost as inflexible as Winds and Dragons. You've got to have very specific tiles. But with evens and odds, there's only one number in between each. So if you get filler tiles, you can easily switch to consecutive run. So those other two categories are far more flexible compared to 369, where there's two numbers in between, three numbers, let's see, four, five, no, two numbers in between each. Three, then you have four, five, not in there, six, and then seven, eight, not in there. So three, six, nine. I wonder why they came up with those numbers, three, six, nine. I don't know what the significance of that is, but anyhow. All right, so we're going to do Charleston practice, and we're going to play the T's. Here's our hand, and you want to sort by suit. 
you can see that we have mostly wins. Well, not mostly. We have lots of wins, two pair even. If I were not playing the T-zone, I would play wins. But we're focused on just the T-zone. And the predominant pattern here is big odds. We've got five, seven, nine. So that's where I would start with five, seven, nine. Five, seven, nine. That would use the number tiles wisely, I think. And then I would break up the pairs since we're not playing wins. And then I would pass different suits. North two, six. That's the best we can do with what we have. So let's pass and see if we can get big odds. We got a seven and a nine. With five, seven, nine, we have seven, nine in dots and five, seven, nine in bams. I think I would probably let the dragon go. Plus, we need the dragon so we don't pass two wins. And we're also going to break up that east pair. So we're looking better for five, seven, nine. We're going to keep gathering. We've got tiles to pass. Now, if we happen to get an eight, we might be able to switch to six, seven, eight, nine. So I would keep the six, even though the predominant pattern is seven, nine, five, seven, nine, big odds. So now we are passing to the left. Let's pass in east, a one and a two. It's a little bit risky, but it is the best we can do with what we have. When you're passing tiles, try not to put too much pressure on yourself. Just do the best you can with what you have. And sometimes that means passing something risky like this. Passing a one-two is pretty risky, but at least it's in two different suits. And we are focused on our hand first, and then we're doing the best we can with what we have left over. I think that kind of takes the pressure off a little bit. All right, let's pass. We got a seven. And we did get ones. So let's just quickly reassess since these are odds. So we ended up in pretty good shape for an odd hand. We have two wins, and the rest of our tiles are all odd. Do a quick assessment when you get to a point like this, just to make sure that you're not going to be able to use some of these tiles. Like the ones, I, I don't think are going to be useful for us because we have no threes. We can't do a one, three, five, seven, nine hand in mixed suits because we have no threes. That would be the gap. Anytime you have a gap, put it low on the priority list. I would let the ones go and I'd probably let the six go because I wouldn't pass two wins and I wouldn't pass two ones. So we're gonna let the six go and we're gonna focus on five, seven, nine. All right, so we're gonna keep going. Second Charleston. We're gonna pass the north, the one dot and the six bam. All right. We did get threes and we even have a one. So at this point, I would reassess again. So we have two discards. We're going across. We have to pass fully three tiles. We have one, three, five, seven, nine in one suit. We have three, seven, nine in cracks, seven, nine in dots with a pair of nines. So one. Let's see, one, three, five, seven, nine, seven, nine, three, five. We, we could maybe play that first hand under odds in mixed suits, but we have no one crack. So for example, we could do one crack, three crack, five bam, and then seven, nine in dots, but we have a gap, no one. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't play that hand. I would just let it go. And that really makes this three crack useless. Without a one crack, the three crack is useless with these tiles. And all we needed to do was identify one tile to pass because now we have three. We can stop the analysis. This is one way for you to keep up with the pace of the group. Try not to overanalyze because every pass you get could change your plans. So find three discards and pass. Stop the analysis then get your next pass in and then do a quick analysis, identify three tiles and move along. That is one way to keep the pace of the game if you're playing with people more experienced than you. 
All right, so we're going to pass south two and three, a little bit risky, but again, they're two different suits, so that is the best we can do. And we have a seven dot, seven dot. Now we have two pair in here. Those are multiples. So whatever we do, we're going to use the seven dot and the nine dot. That's where we start, seven, nine. There's a few things we can do. We, we need to pass to the right, so we need to identify one more tile. I would say that, let's see, if we get a five dot, we might be able to play that first hand and use the one bam, one three and bams, five dot, uh, I'm sorry, five crack, and then seven, nine and dots. But we have no five, no five crack. So I think what I would do here, let's see, that we do actually have a hand in here with no gaps. Five, seven, bam, seven, nine, dot. That would be the second hand down on the right. So I don't think I would throw the five. I think what I would do here is probably let the nine, bam, go. Let's see. Nine, bam, north, four, nine. That's not too bad. We have seven, nine, five, seven, nine. We have five, seven. Oh, here's another potential hand. If we get flowers, that's a gap though. We have no flowers. But the third hand from the bottom on the right, five, seven, bam, nine, crack, nine, dot. We'd have to throw away a pair of seven dots though. I think probably the second hand down on the right is gonna be the best option for us. All right, so let's pass these three. Courtesy pass. We have a one. Oh, look. Oh, no, no. Five dot. I was hoping that was an eight, a five crack. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. So now we're doing the optional cross. We have, here's a one, five, seven, nine, one, three, five, seven, seven, and nine. We did get an eight finally, seven, eight, nine, but our, our predominant pattern is clearly in odds. So I would see if we can come up with tiles to pass. I think we have one clear discard. So now we need to pick two more. I think what I would do here is let go of the little odds. We have a gap, no five crack. So I wouldn't think about playing that first hand. I'd rather focus on five, seven, nine, second hand down on the right, no gaps. Let's see here, one, three, Five, seven, seven, nine, nine crack, five, seven. You know, what we could do is pass a seven, eight. And if we happen to get the five crack, we could maybe consider that first hand on the right in mixed suits. If we get flowers, we could try the third hand from the bottom on the right. These are big ifs because of the gaps. Either way, we didn't use the seven crack with any of those options. So let's pass three, these three. It's a little bit risky with a seven, eight in one suit. We gotta build our hand first as the priority. We got evens. Okay, so now we have three discards and a predominant pattern with two multiples. I would say that's a pretty good Charleston. I would say that for this deal and the res after the results of the Charleston, I would say we would be a contender because we do have a hand with no gaps. Second one down on the right, 5779. Seven, okay, now, what do you guys think about the T-zone? We focused on odds, but we also considered for a time consecutive run. We had a six and an eight. We, they ended up back in the hand. I don't think they're going to be helpful much, though, because the six, seven, and bams work with the eight, nine, and cracks. We have no eight dot. And really, you want to focus on the multiples, which is seven, nine. That would be odd. So I would let these go and focus on odds. Build around your multiples. Let your multiples drive the decision. The concealed hand. We we have no gaps for that hand. However, we'd have to throw away a seven dot. I would rather use it. But we could potentially 
play that hand. So at the moment we could keep those tiles. I would say probably the seven bam would need to go unless we get flowers though. One reason why we were keeping the seven bam is because if we get flowers, we could play the five, seven, nine, nine hand, which is the third hand from the bottom on the right. So let's look at their suggested hands. The first one, which is what I was thinking we could do, five, seven, seven, nine. There are seven tiles towards that hand. That's what the little number there is in the box. Let me go full screen. Then the next hand down is the concealed hand. There are eight tiles that would use that. However, we would have to throw away one of the pair. And I, I would probably not do that. There are seven tiles towards the first hand, but there's a gap, no five crack. I think that if they identified whether or not there's a gap, well, I mean, you can kind of see it up above where they highlight the tiles. The tiles that are shaded are the tiles you have. The tiles that are not shaded are, gap, are basically weaknesses or gaps. And you can see that we have a con gap. That's huge. I would not recommend playing that hand. There's also the dragon hand, another huge gap. So I would not recommend that as an option. And then finally, we have six, seven, eight, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, single pair pung, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, that is a potential hand. And there are seven tiles using the Joker that could be used. However, you're going to throw away a pair of sevens. I would not recommend that. So if this were my hand, I would focus on five, seven, seven, nine, leveraging the multiples and going with a hand with no gaps. I hope you found this helpful. Let's do a new one. First Charleston. We could maybe play in a different category. We have a pair of nine cracks though. So that's an odd number. I would focus there. Here we have two wins. We're not playing wins, so we're going to let those go. And we happen to be in odds again because we have a nine crack pair. That's where you start. Look for the multiple and target the multiple because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. So we're going to start with that nine crack. We might be able to do something consecutive if we get an eight. So let's keep the six and the other seven. And that means that we have seven discards. Now, there is that concealed hand, like D pointed out. If we get the right tiles, we might be able to play the concealed hand. So let's keep the one and the three. And that leaves us with five discards and different suits so we can pass safely. Uh, two, four, east. That's not too bad. All right, let's see here. Let me just double check on chat and whatnot here. Okay. All right. So we have a pass, two, four east. We have a three, one, three pair there. Uh, we're back to where we need a maybe a five bam in here. Now here we built up a multiple, a four bam. We need to reassess. Anytime a new multiple forms, reassess. So we have two clear tiles that we can pass, west and a green. But we have now here three, four consecutive pairs. When you have pairs that you that may or may not work together use most of them together and let one go so in this case we have consecutive excuse me we have consecutive pairs three four so i'd reassess and i would use three four instead of the nine i would now break up the nine and focus on little numbers and leverage the three four now, three, four, five, six might work. 
a, a range. Sorry, let me get this in order here. Three, four, five, six. Usually you want to get four numbers in a range around your multiples, especially if you have mixed suits. So we have a pair of nines and two sevens. I think I would stop with the uh, analysis and just keep the little numbers. Probably keep one, two, three, four, or two, three, four, five. The six probably will go, especially because it's a dot. Now, if we had maybe a, a bam in the six, that might be a little bit different, but we really don't need that six. So let's break up the nine and see what we get. So we've moved down to the little numbers. So here we have a three, five. Here's five, six, seven. Five, seven. Okay, so we, we need three tiles to pass. West nine is fine. And then I'd probably let the seven dot go because we have three dot four bam. Those are the two components of this hand that we're targeting because there are multiples. We want to try to find a hand that is going to use the three, four. That's the strength of these, these tiles right now. We got a two. It's a little number, so we're going to keep it. Now, in consecutive run, the dragon hands correspond. They're corresponding. So we have mixed suits with three, four mixed suit pairs. So really, the red dragon is going to do us no good. So I would continue, of course. Second Charleston. And we're going to let it go. Now, I don't remember. Did we pass? We passed them a wind. Let's pass the six dot. Actually, you know what? Let's see. Three. Yeah, let's do the six. Uh, because we're looking at three, four. The six dot really is not going to be helpful if we're going to utilize that four. Okay, now there's a three, three, four. And we have nine, eight. Here's the north, nine, eight. Let's let those go. And you might think, well, why not play two, four, six, eight? Because here we have two bam, four bam, and an eight bam. We have no six. That's a gap. So we let it go. We're focused on one, two, three, four. We have wins. It's very risky. Okay, now we have to let something go. When you have tiles in your hand, especially when you're playing consecutive run and you need to identify a tile to pass, look for isolated tiles and let that be the choice. So here, this five dot is isolated. If we had a four dot, then it would no longer be isolated. The one dot is isolated. We could do one nine or we could maybe do five nine. We have two, three, four, three, four, three. It really doesn't matter, I think, at this point. Let's pass the five. I think it's six, one half dozen, the other. Maybe actually the one is a little better. Using a one dot and a nine dot will only work together for that first hand in one suit. That's one of 60 some hands. So let's pass that. Oh, actually, that's not true. Second hand from the bottom. You could potentially use that. Courtesy pass. Two hands. Okay, now here, look, two, three. So we have two, three, two, three, four. We do have a five in here that is isolated. It's not connected to the other suit. Uh, and with our three dot, really the only other five that might be helpful would be a five crack if we can get flowers for the fifth hand down on the right. I would let it go and pass fully three times. Let's pass east eight, five. I think they gave us the east. Okay, so we have a two crack and a six dot. Red dragon, we don't need. West and south, we really don't, didn't need wins at all. We're not focused on wins. So we have two, three, four, really the south or the six can go. We have two, three, four. We could potentially even play, let's see, two, three, two, four. Really the six dot is not going to be helpful. I was thinking about a switch to two, four, six, eight, but we have no eight. So I would just focus on two, three, four. I wouldn't pick a hand and I would gather. 
it would be ideal to get a four dot because then we could maybe play that third hand from the bottom. So I would hope for a four dot, maybe even consider using the jokers to fill that gap and play three, four, three, four. If we get a five bam, we could maybe do two, three, four, five. So there's gathering to do here. Let's see what the game suggests. One, two, three, four are basically here be two, three, four, five, but we have a gap, no five. Here, three, four, three, four, that's the one I was thinking of. Then we could do one, two, three, four, and one suit. I would not recommend that because you'd have to throw away a pair of threes. We could do two, three, four, five, six, but we have a pair gap, I mean, a Kong gap, actually. We don't have a five crack. I'm not sure why that's highlighted like that. Two, three, four, single pair pung, five crack, six dot. Again, we'd have to throw away a three dot, so I probably wouldn't do that. And then we have the flower hand, pair, pair, pung, pung, two, three, four, four. It looks pretty, but it is not, I would not recommend this because we have a huge gap, no flowers. It's telling us we can use the jokers. But I, if I had to pick a hand, I would probably play three, four, three, four and use the jokers to help. I think that's probably the strongest if I had to pick a hand and it would utilize both multiples. And that's what you want to do. You want to build around multiples. Really, in this case, we're still gathering. So we're gathering tiles to support the multiple. Then when the gaps are filled, then we build. All right, let's play. Let's do a replay. I mean, no, no. First Charleston. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well. All right, let's see. Sort by suit. Two, three, two, four. Let's, I think I picked um, replay. Let's see if we can play a two, four, six, eight with these. Uh, oh, yeah, look, we have eight crack. I guess I did click the right button. Two, four, six, eight. Look at all the two, four, six, eight we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, hold on a second. We have seven tiles towards two, four, six, eight, but there's a gap, no four. I would not consider that. I instead would play six, seven, eight, nine, maybe five, six, seven, eight. So I would let the little numbers go. With these tiles, consecutive run is the best category because it uses the multiple. We're targeting the multiple. We're maximizing because we're using most of our tiles and we're playing consecutive run, which is extremely flexible. Whatever we do, we wanna use the eight crack pair. So here we have a three and we have maybe a two. I would not pass another two, especially because we're in the year 2023 where there are two twos in a year block so you don't want to pass like numbers especially twos so for this i would drill into this somewhere and release a tile and this is where you want to look for isolated tiles one of our isolated tiles is the five crack because it, there's a gap, no six crack, to get up to that eight crack pair. So I probably would pass the five crack. It's isolated. Otherwise, we have six, seven, eight, nine, all together, all linked in. Even though they're mixed suits, it's okay. And we're targeting the multiple, the eight crack. So we're going to let this five crack go. We have a five bam. Again, it's isolated. There's nothing between the five and the seven. Five, yes, we're really better off to just stick with seven, eight. But we need only one tile to pass. So I think, again, we'll let the five go. And I wouldn't be distracted by five, seven, nine. Do you see that in there? Five bam, seven bam, nine bam, seven crack, five, seven, nine, big odds because we have a pair of eights. The pair of eights is what you wanna focus on. Start with the multiple and gather tiles to support the multiple and make it work. 
So we're trying to make it work with the eight dot pair. Okay, so here we have one one. That's a very risky pass. Robot, robot pass us like numbers. But we do have three tiles to pass. So we can keep our consecutive tiles. We have wins, two wins, very risky robot. But we have second Charleston. We have tiles we can pass. One three south. Okay, now four. That doesn't really fit with our run because we have no fives. And you might think, well, what about two, four, six, eight? We have no two. So we should let that go. I would break up the west and pass the four and the green. We have a new multiple, the six dot. Anytime you develop a new multiple, reassess. We have two multiples, six and eight. We actually have a hand in here. Six, seven, eight, mix suit Kongs. Right here. Six, seven, eight, mix suit Kongs, fifth hand down on the right. And that uses two multiples. So if I had to pick a hand, that's probably the one I would play. I would not pass two wins. We're on the last right. Let's pass the south, the seven, and the nine. Let's see, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. We could maybe pass eight, nine, but that is pretty risky. One thing I was thinking is if we get a five dot, we could do five, six, seven, eight, which is really good, very easy because you can use any number of jokers. Let's go ahead and do it and optimize our own potential. Courtesy pass. Okay, no keepers. We're going to do the optional cross and we have tiles to pass. Okay, so boy, they really were liberal with passing wins in this game. So we have five discards. We're going to be an underdog for this. Uh, really, we have six discards, but we have an option in here. Probably I would let that go. We have seven discards, but we have a hand with no gaps. I'd say we're an underdog on this one, just the way it turned out. But if we draw well, I think we could get up to being a contender pretty quickly. Okay, so let's see what they suggest. Oh, I'm just really, well, yeah, of course, east and west, but we're not playing wins. East and west with uh, a run, seven, eight, nine, but that's an, a con gap. I would not recommend that hand. One, two, three, four, four, five, or five, six, seven, eight. That's one of the th uh, hands I was thinking about if we could fill the gap with the five dot, but I wouldn't make that my primary focus. This is the hand I would focus on. Here we have no gaps, no gaps. One weakness with the flower. We can't use a joker with a pair. That's our only weakness. Otherwise we can use any number of jokers for the cons. Okay, so. We're going we're gonna to go again. We'll do one First more, Charleston. and then we'll play with robots. All right, so just if you're joining us for this Nitty Gritty Basics Let's Play live stream, we're focused on playing in the T zone. This is 2468 consecutive run, 369 and odds. So we're not playing outside that T zone. And this is a, a great recommendation for anyone who is overwhelmed by the game, maybe they're just learning and it, it's just too much to, to play in all those other categories. The T-Zone is an on-ramp. It's a great way to just get onto the game, get into the game and master the T-Zone. And then we're gonna talk about how to progress af at the end of this session. All right, so we're gonna let the wins go. So these are discards right off the bat because they're not, they're outside the T-zone. And we're going to look for multiples. We have one, the six crack. So whatever we do, we're going to use the six. We do have consecutive tiles, five, six, seven, eight. And that's what I would focus on. Five, six, seven, eight. I would just hold every five, six, seven, eight. And I would not pick a hand yet. We have too many discards to pick a hand. We just gonna, we're just going to gather. We're going to gather tiles to support the six. Now, if we were to get a three, 
we could potentially play a three, six, nine hand, but there are no threes. So I would let that go, especially because we have four wins. I would not pass two wins. If we kept the six, we'd either have to let one of our consecutive tiles go, or we'd have to pass two wins. And I wouldn't do that. So I would let the nine go for now and pass the two and break up the pair of Souths. Okay, so here we have a six dot and we have an eight, eight dot, six, eight, six. Okay, well, let's keep going. So we have, we're going across. Let's pass the South to a different person. So now we have five, six, seven, eight. We need one tile to pass. Six, seven, eight. We have in here six dot, eight dot, six crack. Let's see. I think I would let the seven bam go because we could either do five, six, seven, eight, or we could do six, seven, eight in a run and let the six cracks go. I'm primarily looking at the second hand down if we had to pick a hand. So we had to let something go and I would probably let that seven go. Actually, you know what? Maybe Maybe we ought to keep the seven and no, no, no. It's seven crack that we really would prefer here because we could do six, seven, six, seven and let the eight dots go. So let's see what we get. Oh, a seven dot. Okay. Five, uh, six, seven, eight. We have two tiles to pass. We need to let something go from our keepers. Six, seven, eight in dots and a six crack pair. This is where you look at all your multiples and you choose a direction where you can use most of your multiples. In this case, six, seven, eight in dots. That would use most of our multiples. Either way, we could break up the six crack or let the five go. You know what, though? We could also maybe play five, six, seven, eight and let the six dots go. That's probably even better, actually. Five, six, crack, seven, eight in dots and let the six dot go because there's no gaps there. If we had a flower, we could do six, seven, eight in dots with Kongs, fifth hand down, but we don't have flowers. So I think this is what I would do. Free up the six. Focus on five, six, seven, eight, second hand down on the right. Okay, now here we have second Charleston. Wins. Let's let let's pass the nine and the one. Okay, we have we got the six back. Okay, let's just tuck it in there because now we have a pair again. We have a five and the seven back. We're going across, so let's pass the east. We have five, six, six, seven, eight. We can pass the five, seven. It's a little bit risky. That's okay though. All right, now here, four north, we need to let something go. Maybe we pass fully and let two wins go. Just make it a rarity. Courtesy pass. In this case, it somewhat paid off we're still in a tough position because to use six seven eight like this in dots we would need a flower and we don't have one we need a pair that's a pair gap it's very risky i think what i would do is pass three and let these go see what we get if we can get a five dot or a nine dot that would be ideal otherwise we're going to probably have to break up the six dot pung and go with five, six, seven, eight in one, uh, two suits. Let's see here. So there's a seven, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight. We ended up with all five through nine, which is interesting. All five through nine, lots of good fodder. If I had to pick a hand, I'd play five crack, six crack, seven dot, eight dot, and let the, the six dot pung go. Let's see what they tell us. One, two, one, two. So six, seven, six, seven. 
we'd have to throw away a pair of eights. It's possible, but either way, we have to throw away a pair of eights. Here is five, six, seven, eight, but we have a gap, no five dot. Here, five, six, seven, eight, no gaps. That's why this is what I would choose. Five, six, seven, eight, it uses three multiples, but it has no gaps, even though we have to throw away a, a pun of sixes. And then the other two, let's see, let's look at this one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have no nine bam. That's a con gap. That's huge. I wouldn't recommend that. I think probably either, either this, six, seven, six, seven, no gaps, uses three multiples, including the pung. That probably is the better hand. We'd give away a pair versus this one where we'd have to give away a pung. So probably this one is what I would do, 6767. Seven, six, seven. The weakness is really with the seven crack. So I would keep the eight dot for as long as possible to maybe get a joker exchange option out of that. All right, so we're going to close this. And now we're going to play with robots. We're going to play it through, staying in the T-zone. So I'm going to, we're going to play with intermediate robots. Let me share my screen. Thanks for coming to the live stream, by the way. Today we're focused on the T-zone, which minimizes the options to really minimize the number of categories that you're focused on to minimize the overwhelm when learning the game. That's why we're doing this. So we're going to play with robots. We're gonna play with level two bots. That would be intermediate. It's always good to play with people who are a little bit better than you. That's a good way to push yourself. So we're gonna play with robots. Um, level two. Where's Charleston? Okay, now. We're focused on the T-zone, so we don't need wins. We have a pair of fives. This is where you target multiples if you have them. So whatever we do, we're going to use the five bam. And now we're going to look at the rest of our tiles and find a category that will use most of them supporting the five bam. And to me, that means three, four, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five in this case. There's two, three. Here's a three, four. And you keep every number in a range, four to five numbers in a range around your multiple, regardless of suit. That's why we're keeping the three, four in cracks. We may be able to use this dragon if we get more consecutive tiles. So let's keep the dragon. And that leaves us with five discards. It's going to be challenging, though, because we have eights and nines. But if we break them up, that's okay. And then that leaves us with a mixed suit 8-9, which is fine. Oh, we paired up. We pair. Oh, here's another pair too, the dragon. And here's a 3, a 1-3, one, 1-3-5 three, one, three, dragon. We might be able to switch to the fourth hand down under odds. 1-3-5 dragon. But we have no flowers. That would be a gap. I would break up the nine, even though that's a pair. Most of our tiles work with the five, either little odds or two, three, four, five. Now we have to let something go because I would not pass a pair. We have to let something here go. This is where I would look for isolated tiles. And I would, I would say the two bam would be probably the best one to pass because we have no four bam. Uh, let's see. Actually, you know what? Maybe we ought to keep that because if we get four BAMs, I suppose we could use the Jokers. We could play one through five. So maybe the four crack would be the better tile to pass. Incidentally, if you make the wrong choice, it's okay because you can recover from one discard super easy in another pass or when you get to the pick and discard phase of the game. So don't fret when you give something away. 
it could come back to you or you could pick it in the when you're picking from the wall or maybe even fill it with a joker all right so let's pass we got a six so we have one two three five six we have like numbers with or i'm sorry a pair of nines we're going to break that up let the seven go and then we'll let the three uh, three crack go it's isolated so that's not going to be helpful at all we have one two three five six so we're going to keep gathering four dot it's really the wrong suit but we can keep it second charleston it's in our range one one through five two through six we're building around the five really the red dragon is not going to be helpful in consecutive run the dragons match okay we have eight nine big numbers here's like numbers and here <clears throat> excuse me i would let the four go the four dot it's our only four but it's also a a suit that makes it isolated we have no other three to get us from the four dot to the five band or another six in a different suit like if we had a six crack maybe i would keep the four dot because we could maybe use the four dot five bam six crack but we don't so the four dots going okay big numbers going around makes it easy to pass courtesy pass we want little numbers there's a little number we did get the four dot back and we have i i would let it go and pass fully a four nine is not bad so we're going to pass four nine and a red okay here's how we're we left off we have one two three five six and a pair of dragons i wouldn't pick a hand but if we get a flower, I would look for that third or fourth hand down under odds. We have three discards, clearly, probably two others, because we cannot keep all these tiles. So I'd say we probably have four or five discards, which is going to make us probably an underdog at the moment. So let's just see how well we draw. I think I would let the three crack, three crack call north. Oh, wow. They took a... They, they took the three crack right away. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna pass on the north. So we don't need dragons. Flower. We don't have any flowers. Okay, we got the four bam. That fills a gap. So now I feel so much better. I would say we're up to being a contender at this point because we only had one discard and we're down to now here. Let's say we throw the six crack six crack we have West. one clear discard and then we have all other keepers i'd say we're a contender here and if i had to pick a hand i'd probably play the first hand under consecutive run because we have no gaps probably the six will go three four unless we get a flower because if we get a flower we can maybe play the concealed hand under consecutive run three four five six or two three four five all right so we're gonna pass so we don't need dragons nine bam don't need a nine bam oh now we have another multiple a one so with our multiples one three five we really don't need the six bam but the four dot clearly can go so we're four gonna dot. move the game along nine dot go Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. If we had a flower, I'd play that one, three, five dragon hand under odds, but we don't. So I would focus on one through five. And if the two bam or the four bam are discarded, we might pong. We could even maybe Kong the three bam and let the dragons go. The dragons look pretty, but without flowers, they're not gonna be helpful for either the concealed consecutive hand or the odd little odd hand four crack no we don't need six that. bam we're good there nobody wanted it now the red dragon the six bam nobody wanted i would let the dragon go. red the red Eight dragon crack. is a more risky tile five bam okay now for us if we play the first hand which is what i think we should do we would need a pair and so we, we don't need to even consider that 
if we were to consider the fourth hand down under odds, we could Kong the five, but we have no flowers. That is a pair gap. So we're going to let it go. Nine dot. We don't need a nine dot. Five dot. We're in band. Five dot. Six bam. We can let that go. Four dot. Seven crack. Seven bam. If, yeah, I, the seven, six bams are all out. Six so bam. Let's throw that out. Nine crack. All right. We don't need a nine crack. We're looking Five for crack. bams. Six crack. Don't need the six. Six crack again. Six crack. Look at all East. the four, five, six out. That's interesting because that's going to sabotage a lot of consecutive hands. Let's see. Right now, our tiles are not out. Three dot. Flower. Okay. First flower out. Second flower out. Four dot. Four dot again. Three dot. Joker swap. Nine dot. Someone got the joker. Seven bam. We don't need the seven Call. bam. Oh, seven good. Crack. There's a joker potential there for us. Seven bam. Eight bam. So on our turn, we're going to double click on that. Joker swap. And we got a joker. And here's a two. So now we have one, two, three, five paired up. I would let the dragons go and I would dig my heels into that first hand. Green. Two crack. And we're actually set. We can use these jokers in here to help us get to the first one through five hand. Eight dot. I'd say we're a front runner now. There's, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, six, eight. We're on our, this is the eighth round of discards. And we have a hand with no gaps and we're set. I would say we're a front runner now. So we came from being an underdog to a front runner with picking and leveraging multiples. Call south. Okay, there's another joker up for grabs. Dragon. Green. One crack. So we don't need Red. that. There's two jokers up for grabs. North. Always want to keep your eyes open for those. Four crack. Two bam. Okay, that's that's a call for us. We're gonna pump. One, two, pair pump. Call red. Wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> our opponent got it. I thought, wait, I didn't get a discard. Our opponent got the two bam. So, and that's fine because we can use the joker. So that doesn't impact us at all. And we really don't even need to do an exchange because all the two bams are used up. Okay, so the green dragon should be safe. Uh, it's been discarded and nobody wanted them. The nine crack should also be safe. Let's discard that. Nine crack, two crack. Okay, we're looking for three bam, four South. bam. Two crack. Now, this player to our left, they're playing two, four, six, eight in bams and dots. So they're going to have our four bam, probably. We might even need to get a joker for that four bam because it's going to be likely that they have the four bam. Okay, now here, we should keep that because we maybe could play one, two, three, four. Hmm. Either way, we don't need this dragon. Green. I think even though that crack. looks interesting, because the player to our left, Agata, they are playing two, four, six, eight. So they have our four bam. If we switch to one, two, three, four, pong, kong, pong, kong, we would need jokers probably because I'm pretty sure they have four bams and we'd have to throw away a pair of five bams. So probably this one bam will be a discard. Eight crack. Two dot. Good. Two dot. Can two dot. Two crack. Nine crack. No, we're good there. Three crack. East can go. East, red. One crack. We're looking for a three bam or a four bam. Six bam. We're good there. Nine crack again. Nine crack. There's South. still two jokers up for grabs. Flower. No. Nope. Soap. A flower. All right. Let's see. 
flower. One, two, three. How many flower? There's one, two, three flowers out. I don't think I would change my hand. We could maybe play one, two, three, one soup Kongs and let the four bam go and the five dot pair. But this four bam could even be the winning tile for the player on our left. Flowers are being discarded and we need a pair so we can't call for it. So by giving up a hand where we can use any number of jokers for the two, three, four. We have our pair of ones and our pair of fives. I think that would be going from strength to weakness. So I think we should let the flower go. Flower north. And probably this one bam will be discarded. So hopefully we'll be able to calm the three and pung the four. Three dot. One crack. Three dot is out. Three dot. West. Mahjong. We have a winner. Our we came a long way. We we went from being an underdog to probably a front runner. We're actually one away from ready. So we were right up there with these other folks. Five, seven, seven, nine, three jokers. Nice. Okay. We're going to do the next game. First Charleston. Okay. So as a reminder, we're focused on the T-zone. We're going to have a tough time at first because we've got four wins. We're not playing in wins. We have a pair of nine cracks, so I would let the little numbers go. The six dot is isolated, so I would let that go with the four and focus on seven, eight, nine. So let's break up the east and pass the six, four. We have a six band that is not isolated, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna give the east to a different player. Here's a six crack, isolated, seven band, pair. We have two pair now, seven band, nine crack. We have a north, a four, and then I would let the six go because it's it's isolated. And we have wins again and a, no, a nine crack. Oh, that's a keeper. Oops, get over there. We actually have a hand in here because we, we need to find discards. Six, seven, eight, single pair, pung, Kong Kong, eight dot, nine crack. We have a weakness with the eight dot, but we can use any number of jokers. We have our single six and our pair seven. This is the fourth hand down under consecutive run. Because we have a hand with no gaps, with two multiples, one being strong, big, big, big multiple, I would risk passing two pair or not two pair. I would pass two wins and keep going. Second Charleston. Some people might consider stopping the Charleston, but I would rather get more tiles to help me here and risk passing two wins. This is why earlier in the episode, I said that all these guidelines when it comes to defense and strategy tactics, there are exceptions. These are just guidelines. All strategies are guidelines because you can adjust the tactics based on what is happening at the table or what is happening with the development of your hand. In this case, we have a hand with no gaps. So we want to maximize our potential to get more of these tiles. So we're going to risk passing Northeast. We got a keeper and we have three tiles to pass. We need the eight dot. No keepers, but we have tiles to pass. It's a little bit risky. Courtesy pass. No keepers. We have two wins and a seven. Hmm. I don't know if I would pass two wins again. I think I would pass one. One risky pass during the Charleston is probably my max. <laughs> so. Okay, no keepers. So we have three discards in a hand with no gaps. I would say we are a front runner. 
Now, we, we won't be able to call both the 8BAM and the 8DOT. We could only do one, really the 8BAM. We need to build our 8DOT. That's the key for us. But we can use jokers. Single pair pung, Kong Kong. Flower. Nine bam. No, we are looking for, oh, flower. Let's let the east, east go. Call north. Okay. Call. I'm glad we bam. gave them one. Look at these bots with winds. South. Three crack. Okay, the player to our right did not take that south. <gasps> pair of flowers. I would reassess. Okay, so we have a, a new pair. This is where you reassess. So here we could maybe switch to 789, 789 mixed suit Kongs. So either way, we don't need the nine or the five, so we can stay put. Nine dot, three dot. We could maybe Kong the seven, but we still need help with our eight dot. Seven crack. We're good there. Four crack. Five dot, we don't need. Five dot. I'm going to use this joker to separate our discards. Right now, our discard is the five crack. Four bam. Nobody wanted it. Two crack. We're good there. Three bam. We don't need little Three numbers. bam. One, One number, bam. Six, seven, eight, nine. Eight dot is Eight ready. dot. That's what we need, but we need to Kong. We're not ready for that. Four bam. So we're going to need a dedicated joker for our Kong of eight dots. Red call. Two crack. Okay, east and west with dragons. Kong Kong Pung Pung. Seven Bam. That we would need to Kong. With a pair of flowers, I would Kong. Call. We're going to play the fifth hand down on the right. Call. We'll let the five crack, five crack go. Nine dots. Now these six, eight singles, those are discards. And the driver for that was this pair of flowers. It's a multiple. So if you can use them, leverage them. We're going to ignore that. Joker swap. Nine dot. Okay, so we'll ignore that. Eight dot. Oh, no. Now we need two pair. One dot. Five crack. Okay, so this seven bam is up for grabs. Six bam. Any two bam. Take it, though. Another flower. Okay. Eight bam. Eight bam. Go. Four bam. We'll pass. Eight bam. We probably shouldn't hold on to this flower Seven crack. for long. We're going to let it go. Six dot. Really, this west is going to be very risky. One dot. It's pretty early on in the game. Three bam. So I'm guessing they're not west. ready. call. Eight they crack. Are now, whoa, three exposures. So now they need a green, three bam. green or white dragon. My guess is they have a green. Oh, white dragon is out. So. Okay, two bam. So they probably have maybe the green dragon for their pung. Eight. We crack. get a green dragon. We might have to one dot to defense. Okay. Let's see. Two dot. Two dot. Let that go. One crack. We'll ignore. One bam. We need two jokers. One dot. We can let that go. One bam. That is out. One bam. Two dot. Nope. Don't need that. Two crack. Don't need a two crack. We're looking for eight dots or joker, joker swap. We Nine need a dot. joker. How many eight dots are out? There are two. So we need two jokers. Right now, one joker is available for exchange. Nine bam. West. One bam. But I don't think I would take it because it could it could put them in a position to win on a pure hand, which means they would get double the value of the hand. Nine bam. Eight crack. Eight bam. Let's let the seven, seven crack. Four bam. Oh, look, we have six, seven, eight in bams. Joker swap. Mahjong. Mahjong. They got Mahjong. They have Joker for their green dragon. All right, so we have a seven, eight, nine with pair of flowers. We were two away. I think we had a really good chance of winning, but this player across from us, the wins were really going around. And and they had jokers, which is also helpful. First Charleston. All right, let's see what we can do. Okay, now this time it's going to be a little easier for us because we only had two wins. So with the rest of our tiles, the predominant pattern, what do you guys see here? I know what I would focus on. 
We don't have any multiples, so we need to pick a predominant pattern. We don't want to pick a hand, just the category. Evens, consecutive run, 369, or odds. Okay, so Evelyn says little odds. With little odds, there's one, two, three, four tiles. But if you look at consecutive run, there are six tiles. There are far more tiles with consecutive run. The flower can be used in any category, so I typically don't count the flower because you can probably use it. So I just look at the number tiles. Consecutive run is the predominant pattern, three, four, five, six, or two, three, four, five. But because the two is isolated, see the two to the four bam or two to the four dot, it's isolated. I would let it go. We have three, four, five, six. We have four, five, four, five. There is one, two, three, four mix suit Kongs. Uh, I'm sorry, not mix suit Kongs, but uh, one, two, three, four mix suit Pung Kong, Pung Kong. So I probably would pass on the one, two. It's a little bit risky, but we have three, four, five, six. These are the most efficient tiles in the set. Three, four, five, six middle tiles in a range of nine numbers. Keep the two, three band might come in the Charleston. I think we should focus on three, four, five, six. Keep the two. I wouldn't pass two wins. And I wouldn't want to give up my six because we have three, four, five, six. We maybe could keep the two and let the six go. We also have four, five, four, five. We can let the six go. That's a little better pass anyway. Okay, so we ended up with a two, and we do have tiles we can pass here. We did get a dragon, but I wouldn't keep that. I think we, I would rather keep two, three, four, five, and let the dragon go. Okay, so here's a three crack, red dragon. We have mixed suits, so the red dragon is not going to help us. We have two, three, four, five, or four, five, four, five. I would let this two bam go. So we have two, three, four, five of some kind. Five crack. It's isolated. I would I would keep second going. Charleston. We're gonna keep doing the Charleston and let the five crack go. Our our strength is with two, three, four, five at the moment. Still same, but I would not pass two wins. I would let something go. All right, we have a flower. We have three, four, five in a run. Three, four, five. Let's see, we have two, three, four, four. Here's two, three, four, four. It's pretty weak. Let's see, we could do two, three, four mixed suits, two crack, three dot, four bam. We could do three crack, four dot, five bam. Or we could do three, four, five mix, one suit. But we cannot keep it all. We have to let something go. I would not pass like numbers here. I would rather pass two wins. So we're going to pass two wins. Just do a process of elimination and do the best you can with what you have left over. Now we have multiples, finally, four, five. Four, five is, is our, the, that would be our multiple. So the eight BAM could go. And here, four, five, we could do four, five, four, five. Or we could do two, three and cracks with four, five. So I would probably throw the three. I would not pass a flower. I think what I would do is four five four five two three four five there's a three dot there hmm it's uh maybe we can pass the two and let this three go here and focus on four five four five 
All right. Let's Courtesy see. pass. We have a two dot. That's not helpful. We have three tiles to pass. Two, nine, red. Flower. Oh, look, we got the two crack back. So there's an option for us. Okay, so here we have two, three, four, five, or four, five, four, five. Consecutive run number two. Maybe two, three, four, five. Cracks and bams. Or we can do consecutive run one, two, three, six, number six. Okay, we we do not want the flower. So we do not want the soap. We have a keeper for man. Let's let the south, south flower. I would say we're probably a contender here because we have work to do. Even though we have no gaps. Red. Eight bam. We can get another multiple with either the cracks or the dots. I would say we could jump up to a front runner. A three bam. Okay, now that's interesting because now we can maybe try three, four, five Kongs with a pair of flowers. Nine crack. So right so. now we have no discards. We have all keepers. Flower. So we're just going to keep an five eye crack. on it and go with what we get here. Five bam. Pong. So we have three, four, five, four, five, four, five, or two, three, four, five, three, four, five flower. I think what I would do is probably let the two, two crack, crack go north. It's six, one half dozen, the other at this point. Flower. The flowers are going six down. bam. Seven bam, we don't need. It looks seven good, bam. It's not three bam. Okay, now that we would need to Kong right now. And actually, I would because we can Kong every one of these. We can Kong the three, the four, and the five and be ready on the flower. Hopefully, we'll draw a flower. Let's call and Kong. Call. For the one suit Kong hand. Three crack. And now these one four or five are discards. And I'd say we're a front runner now. Four bam. Okay, we can call. Call. Five dot. We need a flower. Flower. Okay, and they're going down. We have five crack. one, two, three, four, five out. Green. We need that five bam as soon as possible. Six dot call. Green. We are. We are. Um, we have a nine weakness. bam. We have a weakness with our flower. seven dot call east. There are two jokers up for grabs. Oh, actually th four because our own three bam call nine crack. Let's see if three we dot a joker. Four crack, no. Four crack. Green. Six dot, seven dot, three bam. All those jokers are up for grabs. One crack. Chances of us getting them are pretty good. I'd say 50% 50, 50 chance right there. Nine bam. We have a 50, 50 chance of getting one of these jokers. Two crack. Seven bam. Three crack. Okay, let's hope for a joker. Nine bam. Change. Six bam. Oh, well, that's no, we're already committed with our Kongs. Six bam, one dot. Okay, we need one bam. We need red, a flower, eight crack, eight crack, call south. Oh boy. Oh my gosh, look at all these jokers. One, two, three, four, five, six jokers up for grabs. Oh my south. goodness, do you think we could six get one? Six bam. So we only need one south. Oh, oh, West call there North. It is. Okay, North. Joker swap. One bam. Somebody got a Joker. Seven crack. Seven crack. Nine bam. Okay, we need a Joker Nine or dot. a flower pretty bad. Joker swap. Uh -oh. Three crack. Two bam. No. Two bam. One crack. Okay. Seven crack. I want a Joker. Red. Joker exchange. Four crack. Four crack. Joker swap. Oh my Seven goodness. crack. Okay, now we have only three jokers up for grabs. Eight bam. I think that we would get at least Seven one. bam. No. Two dot. Six bam. Oh my goodness. Six crack. The luck comes Call. In. Two bam. Okay. Four crack. Four crack. Again? Seven crack. Oh. Five dot. Two bam. Okay, we need a keeper. Green dragon. Green. Nine crack. Okay, come on. Five dot. We need a five bam or a flower. Eight bam. We're supposed to get 1.6 flowers from the wall. So surely we'll draw one. Oh, five crack. Okay, now this player over here to the right, they could be playing, they're probably playing two, four, six, eight in mm, one suit cracks. 
two crack, two crack, four, four. My guess is they're playing two, four, six, eight in one suit because of the six dot, no, four dot. They could be doing two, four, six, eight dots and cracks. This four dot, we should let it go now. Four dot Mahjong. Oh, shoot. The other player had him. Oh, look, they did have a four dot. There's the one suit. All right, so they have two, three, four, east and west. We got close to that one. One away. Okay, let's First play Charleston. again. Hopefully we'll get to play two more hands. All right, now, um, for these last two hands, I'm going to give you the advice. Okay, because we have probably two hands that we can play. This T-zone is a temporary solution to minimize overwhelm. But you don't want to stay there. You're going to need to branch out. You're going to need a progressive approach to mastering the whole card. So once you get a handle on the T-zone, that would be evens, odds, three, six, nine, and consecutive run, the T-zone. Then you're going to add the categories by panel left to right. So we would add the year, like numbers, and addition as the next step. So we would play the T-zone and the first panel. So that's what we're going to do with the next game. And then after, after you add that left panel and you're confident with those categories plus the T-zone, then you're going to add quince in the middle panel. Once you're comfortable with that additional category, then you're going to add the last panel, which would be wins and singles and pairs. And that is how eventually you will master the entire card. So with this next hand, we're going to add the year, like numbers and addition, and we'll throw quince in there so that the last hand will add the last panel, which would be wins and dragons and singles and pairs. So we're going to open it up a little bit more. We're going to think about year, any like numbers in addition, in addition to the T-zone. Okay, let's see what we have. We have a pair of red dragons. So whatever we do, we're going to try and use those. We do have sevens. We might be able to play like numbers. And I think I would keep the crack because with consecutive run, we might be able to, oh, shoot. Sorry about that. I forgot to switch. Okay, let me resort. I did it again. So sorry. Okay. So we have west, south. We're not playing wins, not until the next hand. And then we have the red dragons. That's what we're going to focus on. And then I'm seeing like numbers with sevens as potential. We really want to try to use the red dragon pair. So that's why I would keep the three crack, because if we can get consecutive tiles, we might be able to use the red dragon. All right, we, we can pass one wind, and then let's maybe do the five and the one. That's not too bad. Okay, here we go. Actually, you know what? We should keep that five because there is an offsuit dragon hand in odds. This would be the fourth, a fifth hand down on the right. Five, seven in dots, seven, nine in bams with red dragon Kong. So let's let the four bam go and see if we can get a nine bam. We got a seven dot and a green dragon. All right, so we have now a mul two multiples. So I would reassess. We developed a new multiple with the seven dot right there. So whatever we do, we want to try to use these two multiples. Maybe the odd hand if we can get a nine bam, but we could maybe also play like numbers with sevens. And that leaves us with three tiles to pass. So it worked out nice. All right, here we have five bam. 
five, seven. If we get a nine dot, we could do five, seven, and bams, seven, nine dot with red dragons. We have tiles we can pass. Five dot. Another pair. Four bam, one dragon, one dragon. That's a one bam. Second Charleston. This thing is a one dragon. So here we have five, seven, and cracks. We have no nine. We have no six. We have two tiles to pass. So we have to let something go. I think I would keep like numbers and probably, whoa, that that is pretty risky right there. That's risky. Five, seven, and dots or like numbers with sevens. Oh. We're going to risk it. Yikes. Okay, we got a five and a nine. Look at all the five, seven, nine we have. We have five, seven in dots, seven, nine crack, second hand down on the right. We could also maybe do five, seven in dots, seven, nine in cracks with a green dragon. So I think what I would do here is probably, let's see, five, seven, let the five go. Five crack and probably, probably the red dragon. I would focus on five, seven and dots. We have a hand in here with no gaps. Actually, we have two hands with no gaps but because we could play like numbers with sevens as well. And there's the sevens. They gave us like numbers and it fit right in. I would break up the fives and play like numbers. We need tiles to pass. We do have five dot, seven dot, seven crack, nine. We'd have to throw away a pair of sevens though. I would rather leverage all the multiples. So we're gonna play like numbers with sevens and break up the five. Courtesy pass. No keepers, we've got discards. I would pass that. So. Okay, so we have four discards and a hand with no gaps. I would say we're a contender here. Four discards. You could be a contender. We have a hand with no gaps. So let's just six crack, crack. Five bam. So nobody wanted the five bam. One bam. If we can oh nobody. So, I, we don't want call, to keep the wins. Eight dot. When the robots love wins on this platform, I've noticed. Three crack. I don't know if that's coincidence but okay the five bam was thrown and nobody wanted five it. five bam four crack okay so we'll let that go one bam don't need the one flower we're not ready for a flower we need a pair joker nice all right so let's let the one one dot go. four dot and we can let that go two dot we don't need two dot we're looking for sevens two crack we could maybe use a white dragon and play the concealed hand Let's let the eight crack go. six dot. We still need to pair up the flower so. or we could do Kongs. I suppose if we do the first uh, like number hand five dots, the third white dragon out. Okay. Now there's another green dragon. We really don't need that though. With like numbers with sevens, we only need green six. call five crack. Okay. There's a pung of greens flower. So they're going to need a Kong of Norths. Eight bam. And they're going to need eight another dot. joker or dragon, the red dragon probably. Six crack. But the white dragons are all out. Three crack. Unless they use jokers. One crack. They could. Two dot. Okay, we don't need that. Seven dot. We need to keep an eye open for the south. Two bam. There's a joker exchange opportunity there. One crack. Four crack. We're good there. Two bam. Nope. Four bam. That don't need a four bam. We're looking for sevens. Here's an eight. Eight dot. Nine crack. Right. Call. Eight bam. If a seven goes down, we might Kong east. We can let that go. East. Call. Four bam. Okay, now they're going to do east and west. Four bam. Four bam. We're good there. Six bam. Don't need it. Six bam. One crack. All right. One crack is two out. Two bam. Two bam we don't need. 
Eight crack. We're looking for sevens and north. Oh, we're going to let it go north. now. One bam. Hopefully they weren't ready for it. If you have a risky One dot. file, get it out as soon as you can. Three bam. Five bam. Gosh, we keep getting. Five bam. We Seven keep crack. Getting. Okay, now we have to make a choice. Since there are three white dragons out, let's let the dragons go and focus on Kongs, like numbers with sevens, and let's Kong. Call. So let's let the dragons go. Red. Flower. And that way, too, this player across from us, they're playing north and south with dragons. The longer we held on to that red, the more risky it's going to get. Seven dot is down. That's okay because where? Oh, right there. It's It could be our pair. It's not a problem because we just need a pair. And we have it. So the seven band maybe could be our con. Or we can maybe use jokers. What we need in here are flowers. Nine dot. So two crack. there are two joker, three jokers up for grabs right now. The nine crack, the south, and the seven dot, uh, seven crack. Okay, let's let the, this dragon is going to be safe. We're still in the middle game, though. Green, five dot. Might be able to, oh, we don't need that. Nine dot. We wanted it, so that could be a good discard. Six crack. We're good there. Okay, nine dot, five dot. These were both thrown. Nine dot, mahjong. Oh, my goodness. It's the prime. That was shocking. Very early. That was an early win. We have three jokers, which is nice. Um, our player across from us, they weren't ready on the north or red, but they were getting there. We got pretty close. We had a hand with no gaps. Okay, so we're going to start a new game. First Charleston. And this time, we are going to... Oh, play the whole card now. Whole card. In and now, of course, we have no wins. <laughs> so we can let those let it go anyway. Our multiples are very interesting in this case. We have four bam pair, nine bam pair, two crack, five crack. These multiples do not go together, but two of them do four, five. I would hold the four five and, and start there. Four five consecutive pairs. We might be able to do four five consecutive run. And there is a slight chance to do two, three, four, five and let the four bams go. So that leaves us with the red dragon, eight, nine, one, seven. I would break up the nine bam and pass thusly. Okay, we got the five. There's a pung in there now. Here's a two. Two, three, four, five. We have no three. We have no six. So right now we're focused on four, five. We're going to pass seven, nine. Seven, nine, mixed suits with a south. There's a three. So now we have three, four, five, five. Here's a one, three. We don't need the eight. We don't need the red. I wouldn't pass two dragons. This would be a very risky pass. I wouldn't recommend that. So I would let something in here go, and I would look for isolated tiles. The isolated tile right now would probably be the one bam. The two crack pair most likely will go, and we'll focus on four bam, five crack. It would be ideal to get another four, like a four crack or maybe a six crack, three, four, five. Six dot would be a nice, a nice tile too. We could maybe play the fourth hand down, really the second hand down under consecutive run, fourth hand down, or maybe the third hand from the bottom. I guess that would be the sixth hand down. So let's just see what happens now. 8.9. These are big numbers. We, we don't second Charleston. We do not want the big numbers. Let's see. Maybe we can let this green dragon go. Oh, three bam. Okay. Three, four, five. Here's a nine, one. Oh, look, hold on a second. Hold the phone. One, two, three, four. However, we have a five 
five crack pair. This is where I'd probably let the two crack go because it's isolated. It's an isolated pair between the two to the five. The only way we could use it is with three foreign cracks, which means we'd have to throw away the three foreign bams. So the two crack is going to go. Okay, we have eights and like numbers with nines, inadvisable. We could pass that though, right there. Courtesy pass. Three dot. Okay, now there's something interesting. One, two, three, three, four, five. Like numbers with nines, pair nine. All right, so three, four, five, three, four, right here. Three, four. We actually have a hand in here. Fourth hand down, one, two, three, single pair pung, four bam, five crack. Kongs. I think what I would do is I would pass two and keep all these one through five. Six hand down, one, two, three, six hand down. Wait, six hand down is four. Uh, what would you? Six hand down, one, two, three, four, five. What numbers would you use, Jane? Four, five, four, five. We have no four crack. Are you thinking four, five, four, five? We have no five crack or four crack. I would let the five, uh, five bam go because we have no gaps for the fourth hand down. Fourth hand down, one, two, three, single pair pung, Kong four bam, Kong five crack. And the three bam would be maybe used to potentially get a joker. I would pass two here and let the five go. So we have, oh look, we have a nine, nine bam pung. All right, we're going to discard it. Nine bam. So nobody wanted it. One bam. Okay, we're good. Three there. bam. All right, now here, three, four, five, six. Three, four, that's the second hand down on the right. Second hand down on the right, but we have no six. No six crack. Okay, so here's where we would have to make a choice, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't take that three. If we were to take it, we could maybe pung and do three, four, five, six, but we have no six. And that is a Kong gap. That's huge. I would not take this three. Okay, so let's, nobody wanted the nine. Nine bam. So we might nine crack. let it go. Look, we got the one. We could do one, two, three, four, pung, Kong. Pung one, Kong two, pung three, Kong four. Six dot. Okay, call so let's two bam. There's a joker up for grabs now. Four bam. Okay, this is where we would need to calm. We're not ready, so we have to let it go. Four dot. We're good there. One bam. Let's just nine let bam. Nine go two bam. Seven crack. One two three bam going down. Five bam. We don't need that. Call seven crack. We okay. There's a a pung of five bams. We need a. Four bam, five bam, two dot would be a great pick. Seven dot. Or a six crack. Call three dot. Okay, six, seven, pong, pong, or kong, kong. One bam. Three dot, that could be our tile. Eight dot. We don't need eight dot. Nine crack, we don't need that. Nine crack, two bam. Okay, we're good. Two there. crack. Don't need a two. Eight dot. Eight dot going down. One dot. Okay, now this is where I would rethink. Uh, one dot, we have a pung now. One, two, three, four. Pung, kong, pung, kong. So uh, let's let the two crack. Two crack. Nine bam. We can ignore Joker that. swap. East. Okay, they got, the jo they got a joker. One oh. dot. No, I would not take that. Oh, we got a keeper, maybe. Two dot. Okay, let's let the one bam go. One bam. So now we have all, all keepers at the moment because we could still do single pair pong, kong, kong. I think that would make the best use of our tiles. Or one, two, and dots with three, four in bams. 
let's see, that's four discards versus four discard. We're even Steven. We yeah, we'd have to throw away a pair and a, a I'm I'm sorry, a Kong or two pair. So it's equal. Six crack. Let's just see how this goes. Seven crack. Seven dot joker. Joker swap. Each. Okay, now we have to make a choice. I think we should go with the hand of least resistance. One, two, three, four. Hung Kong, Pung Kong. Second hand down, Jane, but with one, two, three, four instead. Three dot south. Nine dot. So we need a good pick, though. We need a two dot or a four bam to get set. Eight crack. Let's throw five the crack. Five. One crack. Nobody wanted it. Three dot. We're good. West. Nope. I'm shocked that the five robots crack. didn't take Four a dot. wind pass. Two crack. Nope. One bam. Okay, we're looking for one, uh, two, oh, a flower. No, flower. not that at all. Three crack. Okay, three crack. East. East, we don't need. Two we're crack. For one, two, three, four. Red dragon, we do not Red need that. Red call. Nine crack. Nope. Don't need a nine crack. Two dot, we got a keeper. Five right. crack. Now we're one set. crack. Let's see. No, actually, didn't a two dot go down? No. Okay, we're good to go here. One, two, three, four. Seven crack. Nine dot. It'd be really nice if we could win at least once. Oh, green dragon. Green call. Three bam. Oh, green dragon. Green, green, red. Okay, we need to pung. Call. Eight crack. We're one East. away from ready. One crack. Three crack. We're good there. Four crack. Uh -oh. Nine crack. West. Four crack. I think the four West. crack should be okay. Eight dot. No, we don't, we're good there. Seven bam. This might be really Seven bam. Call. North. Five, seven. Five, six, seven, eight. They're playing one suit Pung Kong. Call. So. I'll ignore that. Looks like nobody East. can win. East. Six crack. Okay, there's a joker up for grabs there with north. Yes. Joker swap. Shoot. Four crack. Somebody else got it. Two bam. Okay, we're good there. Oh, look, we're Four ready crack. to win. Green. Oh, my goodness, finally. Okay, so we're ready on either a two dot or a four bam. So, four dot. Some people might call this a double weight. We don't need a west. West. Eight bam. Oh, the four bam is out. So we need a two dot to win. Four bam is right here. Call flower. Oh, there's a couple jokers. Let's see. Eight bam. There's two jokers up for grabs now with the eight bam. They need a six bam. They're getting close to joker swap. Oh, flower. Shoot. Okay. One, one joker up for grabs. Uh oh. This is going to be a risky tile. Five dot. The flowers have been going down. This might be the winning tile for Wes. We're going to throw it anyway. Five dot. Mahjong. There it is. I'm okay with that. We're ready to win. All right. I think that's going to do it. That's going to do it for this nitty gritty basics. Let's play live stream. I hope you enjoyed playing in the T zone. If you have any questions about it, Look for my email in the video description below and send me an email. I do have a wiki article on it, although it's 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 uh, in a wiki article that talks about how to teach American mahjong because this is one of the one of the remedial options if anyone has been experiencing just overwhelm when learning this game. The T zone is a great option. Yes, thank you, Karen. I appreciate you being here. We'll be back again in an hour for the nitty gritty prime time Let's Play live stream. We're going to be forcing hands, and that is a little more advanced. So if you're an intermediate player, consider joining us. Otherwise, if you're a beginner, join us again next Monday. Uh, let's see, next Monday, uh, we are, uh, I think we will be back next Monday. Uh, okay, so 
Uh, yes, we'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you again, moderators, for being here. And channel members, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate it so much. And let's see. I think... Uh, There we go. All right. With that, we're going to sign off. If you have any questions between now and the next live stream, send me an email or comment under the video description below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, May all your picks be keepers.